Okay, so the GPT-5 API just came out like a few minutes ago. And as you all may know, it's the next step in the LLM game. It comes with better coding skills, better writing, so great for content creation, more useful health answers, and of course, it's more safe and more accurate. And in this video, we're simply gonna look at how to use this new GPT-5 API inside N8N, specifically with your AI agent, with a HTTP request, and with an OpenAI message a model node. All right, so the GPT-5 model comes with three sub models, the GPT-5, GPT-5 mini and GPT-5 nano. All of these are very similar and the only big difference they have apart from how smart they are is the pricing. So this is the pricing for GPT-5, this is the pricing for GPT-5 mini and this is the pricing for GPT-5 nano. We also see that GPT-5 has web search and MCP support as well as GPT-5 mini. So right here, it also says that it has web search and MCP support. And unfortunately for the GPT-5 nano model, we do not have that web search function. So yeah, that's basically the main differences they have because for the context window, they have the same amount of size as you can see right here. It's 400,000 for all of them. They all have the same max output tokens. So that's a pretty big window as well. They all have a similar date cutoff, which is around May and September of 2024. And they all support reasoning, which is a big step as well. But anyways, that's enough talking. So let's see how to actually use this inside N8N. So first off, let's use this new model inside an AI agent. So to do this, it's really simple. You just have to go to your OpenAI chat model node. And if you search in this model list, for example, we're gonna search GPT, oops, GPT-5, then you'll be able to see all of these. The first three are from GPT-5, then these two are GPT-5 mini, and then these last two are GPT-5 nano. So in this case, let's test out GPT-5 and let's chat with it. In this case, I have it connected with a tool so you can see that it does support tool calling. So since it's a weather tool, let's try testing out with what's the weather in Lima, Peru. And let's see what it says. So boom, as you can see, it just called the weather tool. And now it responded with this valuable information. So as you can see, this model works perfectly with tool colon for your agents. And if you're wondering about the other models, then yes, GPT-5 mini and GPT-5 nano do support tool calling with agents. And yeah, for the people that use a lot of agents, then this new GPT-5 model should be super, super way smarter than the past ones. And of course, from the other flagships like Grok or Claude. But this is super new, so there's not really any benchmarks right now. And I haven't tested it out thoroughly yet, so I can't tell if it's worth the hype. But I think this new model will make everything agent related, like tool calling or orchestration, very easy to use. So building these fully agent systems is now a step closer. So now let's see how to use this model model with the HTTP request node and with the OpenAI message a model node. So let's just start with this one right here. And if you go inside, then again, you can simply select the model from this model dropdown. So to see all of the models, you can just search for GPT-5 and you'll see the main one, the mini ones and the nano ones. So for this example, let's test out GPT-5 nano and let's test out prompting it when will Aggie come or AGI come. If you don't know, AGI means artificial general intelligence. So when AI is basically on the same level as humans. And as you can see, it replied this answer, which is pretty good. And actually, after a bit of reading, this is a really, really good answer. So here you can see that even GPT-5 Nano is a banger model. But anyways, that's how you can use it inside this pre-built node. Of course, you can select, for example, your temperature, your max amount of tokens and so on. But in the documentation, we can also see that there are some new API features for GPT-5. Well, the, the three models. The first one is called minimal reasoning effort. And the second one is called verbosity. So these are actually aimed towards the reasoning versions of the model. So since these are really, really new because they just came out like today, then the options to enable those features inside this pre-built node will take a bit because the developers need to update it. So for cases like these where the pre-built nodes don't have um, the functionalities you're looking for, then of course you can use the good old HTTP request right here. For example, for the simple chat completion, you can simply select the method as post, the URL as this one. So first the OpenAI base URL, 
and then the chat completions endpoint. Then you can just select your predefined credential type um, for your OpenAI account. So just search for OpenAI and select this one right here. And then for the body, just enable send body with using JSON. And here you're free to use any JSON you want. So you can use any feature that they probably haven't rolled out on the pre-built node and so on. So in this case, before we actually test out the reasoning, let's see how it works with the GPT-5 mini model. So for this simple test, we're just gonna use the model, the system message and the user message. And right here, I'm just asking it to tell me a joke and let's see what it comes up with. And boom, as you can see, we basically get the same response as using the pre-built node. And in this case, it replied with this joke. But now to actually test these new API features they're announcing, then again, since you can't use them with the pre-built nodes, you can simply use it with this free JSON because you can put anything you want right here. So first let's test out this minimal reasoning effort. So this simply controls how many reasoning tokens the model will generate before producing a response. And similar to the ones we had before, which was low, medium and high, well, now we basically have minimal. I know this isn't a super incredible breakthrough, but if you want to use it, well, you can just copy this JSON right here, paste it into your HTTP request. And in this case, since we're using reasoning, then we can just change the endpoint to responses. And let's test it out. So as you can see, we're asking a pretty, pretty complex question right here. So let's execute it. And now you can see that we do in fact have an answer. And if we check the reasoning column, then you can see that it is in minimal effort. So yes, that's basically how you can use this new API feature right out of the box without having to wait for the NAT developers to update that pre-built node. And yes, this would be the way how you can use this other new feature called the verbosity, which basically determines how many output tokens are generated or in simple terms, how long the response will be. So previously, the reasoning models have used medium verbosity, as you can see right here, by default. But now with this new feature, then you can actually select if you want medium or high or low. So that's also something that's not a huge breakthrough, but it's pretty cool. And like I mentioned, the way you can use it is via HTTP request. So yeah, now you learned how to use all of the three models from GPT-5 with an agent with a HTTP request node and with a pre-built OpenAI message a model node. I recorded this video with the purpose of putting out the word that the GPT-5 API is now public and everyone can use it and that of course you can use it inside NA10. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'm also really interested in how you would use GPT-5 in your projects, in your workflows. So let me know about that in the comments as well. I know we're still super early with this new model, but I heard some cool things on Reddit. So I'm interested in what you guys know. And if you like AI paired with N8N, then subscribe. Thank you for watching and bye bye.